Hey PC Gamers, and welcome back to PC Gamer Chat Log. I am Lauren Morton. And hey everyone, I'm Molly Taylor. And this week, Molly and I are bringing on online editor Fraser Brown to talk with us about how he keeps track of the games that he plays because he has a habit that I think actually a lot more people than I realized have of taking things to spreadsheets because none of the ways of categorizing his games, like keeping track of every platform, like what he's done throughout the year works for him. So he keeps track of them uh, via spreadsheets uh, with different little markers for how he feels about a game. And Molly and I are going to get into the ways that we have uh, attempted to categorize our games. Some of them work, some of them don't work. Um, yeah. But before we get to that part, Molly, what did you do last week? Yeah, again, not a not a lot. If you've <laughs> if you've been listening the last few weeks, you'll know it's a very like quiet period. Molly's in a me. gaming slump. I am in a gaming slump, big time. I don't know what my problem is at the minute. I've just like I like I finish work, I do the things that I need to do, and I'm just like, ugh. Like I don't want to do anything. I I have still been playing uh a catch game called Nikkei, which I spoke about a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. which is the slightly slightly lewd um yeah, a little you know, a little a little I don't believe this qualifier. I don't believe in it. I think it's full <laughs> lewd. It is it is a slightly lewd gacha game um that has like a very good story. I think I said this last time. It has like it has like a surprisingly good story and a soundtrack by one of like my favorite by one of like the best rhythm game composers, like an amazing rhythm game composer. Um that's my sales pitch. <laughs> I really like it. Um so I've been playing that on my phone because all of my friends are playing it as well, so that has been all of the gaming that I've done, I've been watching a lot of TV and oh, yeah. reading, though. Uh, I am currently on my rewatch of both Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. Okay. Uh, I love those shows. They're my favorite. And I've also been rereading uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World at oh, the minute okay. in anticipation of the TV show coming out mm-hmm. uh, on the 17th of November, I think. It's coming out pretty soon but yeah i think uh, i am i am in a slump i'm in such a slump i don't know how to get out of it at the minute like i think I stepping know. away is the way you get out of a slump i think you're doing the right thing you just got to put everything down and then wait for something to speak to you maybe yeah, you gotta wait for the spark right you yeah. gotta you gotta wait for that spark to return and right now i'm not really feeling the spark you know nothing's really like speaking to me um I think that's going to change in the next, you know, few months and mm-hmm. especially in like two and a bit months when Tekken 8 comes out, that will that will spark something in me, all right. But <laughs> yeah, right now, a little bit of a slump. Hopefully when I come back next week, I will have a little more to share. It's been very quiet. You know, not every week is a winner. <laughs> not every week right. is a winner it's true not every week is a winner <laughs> so that that was that was me how uh how was your week lauren what did you get up to yeah so i talked last week about how i was snacking on a lot of stuff and i'm definitely still doing like my dailies and sky and all of that business um but i also picked up a demo for something i missed over the summer i don't remember exactly when this game launched but it's called chance of sonar um s-e-n-n-a-a-r and i it, it's got a very nice visual style it's very striking like bold colors like sort of the way that um oh my goodness what was it called the game on the motorbike in the desert that uh former pc gamer member nat clayton was very into oh my god God. sable sable thank you um it's got sort of an adjacent to that art style i feel like just in the the way it uses color but anyway this is a puzzle game about language where you show up and people other these other little characters start talking to you and they use symbols and each symbol is a word and you have to solve the puzzles and by solving the like physical puzzle on like what lever to pull to like change where the water is open a door do this that or the other it clues you into what the person was saying to you because they were giving you instructions they're like open this door or you go before me or they say hello and you 
the real puzzle is figuring out the language over time um, and like locking in what you think those symbols are and what words they're associated with. It, it's so great. It, um, I'm only, I've only played the demo so far. I really want to get the full version and continue playing it because after I started playing it, I found out that of all people, um, US news writer Andy Chalk had already written about it when it came out and also thought it was great. I was like, dang, nice, Andy, you really beat me to that one. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm so glad that we already had coverage of it on the site that I just had missed. Um, but it very much brings back those feelings of like, do you, did you ever have the experience because you're a few years behind me of like going to grade school and going to the computer lab because you didn't have an assigned laptop that wasn't a thing you had to go to the room where all of the desktop computers were and you got to play games for a little bit like educational adjacent no. games like zumbinis or Oregon Trail or math blasters or like the the edutainment games we had at the time anyway that was an experience that <laughs> I had and this game brings back good feelings of those types of games where like this is not an educational game it's not but the way that you use logic in it, like that you're deciphering words and trying to solve the puzzle around the language and how it works. That's like perfect edutainment game. That's yeah. it's like, it's a good, nice puzzle game, but it's also like using logic parts of your brain that like, I think educators would want you to be exercising as a grade school student. Like, I, oh man, I'm sure it's not used in schools, but it it's, feels like the perfect kind of thing that could be. And it just has proven that that like, blues clues part of your brain never really <laughs> deactivates where you're like oh I knew the answer I'm so clever and you just feel good <laughs> every little time you're like oh I got it right um so yeah chance of Sonar. uh played the demo for that I want to play more of it that was really great uh that's my recommendation for this week but yeah and uh other than that then let's go get Fraser and let's talk to Fraser about his gaming spreadsheets <laughs> Hey, Fraser, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we are bringing you on because you keep track of your games in a way that when I first heard, I thought was so extra. I thought it was the most extra <laughs> thing I could ever imagine. And then I ran into people that like do this with books. And then yesterday, I also joined the train for keeping track of my games this way, just on happenstance. And I'll tell you about it later. But tell me how you keep track of the games you play every year. Uh, so basically, I put it all in a spreadsheet like a giant nerd. Um, <laughs> it's not something I would normally do because I hate spreadsheets. I hate being <laughs> organized. I'm like a different kind of neurotic. I'm a messy neurotic. Um, so it did not come naturally. But um, in about, I think it was 2019, I had realized I had played basically like no games. Or I, I played a lot of games, but barely finished any. Mm. Um and these weren't games that I disliked. I was really enjoying them, but I kept getting distracted. I'm like a magpie, always honing in on something new and shiny, and I can never just focus. Um, and I considered spreadsheets for a while because I actually had a friend who like tracked movies and books on mm -hmm. a spreadsheet, uh, not games. I thought that seems like a, maybe a good way of just kind of keeping track of things, showing I have like achievable goals, that sort of thing. Um, and sort of also just reminding me of what I played. Like, I, you know, we play so many games in this job, but it's easy to forget. It's easy for, to forget the ones that we liked and disliked. Yeah. Um, so what I did is at the end of 2019, I created my spreadsheet. I put all the games I'd actually finished in that year. Um, and then I marked them whether I liked them, disliked them, or was ambivalent about them. Uh, and also what platform they were on, because I felt... A little bit bad about sometimes ignoring my switch and my playstation in favor of my pc which is obviously the dominant platform for me mm -hmm. um and then 2020 came around and i just started in january tracking everything so i'd gone from something like completing like 12 games in 2019 to i'm just checking my spreadsheet i've actually got it on my phone right now in 2020 <laughs> i completed almost 50 games oh my um, god that's so, so from many 12 to 50 um and it was like not all of the big, but there were some really big ones. Like I'm having a look right now and I've got like big RPGs like Nino Kuni 2, mm -hmm. um, the JRPG. Um, and then stuff that I wanted to like finish through from like ages ago, but just had never bothered like Shadow of the Colossus, the remake. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so like a kind of pretty broad, but yeah, a lot of big ones, a lot of JRPGs, which is weird because I'm not a huge JRPG person. <laughs> 
Um, but just that year, I found 2020 it, was like, a year. That was a year for yeah. finishing yeah, JRPGs. Was a year. <laughs> yeah. And like the, the nice thing as well is that most of them are green. Um, that I like to which denotes that they were good and that I enjoyed them. Oh. Um, because like, um, I, I want to keep as much red out of my spreadsheet as possible. So the deal yeah. I made with myself, if I wasn't enjoying it, I shouldn't feel compelled to finish it. This isn't about getting a high score. I'm not like gamifying it. I'm trying to organize it. Um, mm-hmm. And also maybe just give myself a little sort of nudge uh, to actually bother finishing games. So yeah, 2020, almost 50 games. I feel quite good about that still. That's so many that games. That's so a many... game a week, practically. Yeah. 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 Nice. Molly, how do you keep track of the games you've played throughout the year? Do you have any system at all? I, you are like slightly more organized even than me. I'm like full chaos. Do you think? I don't I I don't know. I know that you <laughs> care about your hours played on Steam. We had this conversation a while back where like that actually matters to you. And I was like, I don't care. I walk away from my computer and I take a nap. And if my game says I've played 50 hours and I've played 30, what do I care? So I figure <laughs> you might have a better system for keeping track of your games than I do, but maybe not. No. Um, no. <laughs> I think my problem is, is like I'll play... I really struggle to get through like tutorial phases of games. So I'll play, I'll play like five, t- I'll load up a game, play five, 10 minutes and I'll be like, okay, I can't be bothered to do this today. And then it's just a game that I never end up playing. And I like, and I always tell myself I should play this game. I should play this game. I should play my game. Th- like this game. My friends have been telling me all year that I need to play Hi-Fi Rush and I have mm. it installed and I'm like, I'm going to play this. And then it just gets lost in like, the list of all the other games that I'm like accumulating because I in my steam library I don't have like collections or anything like that I am I'll either organize by my most recently played or I'll organize by like when the games were added Mm -hmm. so you can organize by like month right and hi-fi rush came out in what like February March, something like that. So that is like way down my list it's at this point. Fallen down the list, yeah. It has fallen down the list. Yeah. So I don't, I don't really have any way that I organize it. Um, back when I used to play a lot more console games, I think I had a better system because I would like buy physical games, and I think if I can physically see and touch something, it makes me way more like likely to interact with it. Um, like there are very few physical games that I haven't played and or completed. Um, I find it way harder with digital games to kind of organize it. Just to do you think it's because you keep seeing it like on your shelf there, reminding like you of your, your failures? Yeah, that's yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, I see it on the shelf, and like because I can like it's like tangible, right? I can pick it up, I can look at it. When it's like in my Steam library, it's just garbles of text that I sort of don't really perceive anymore. Um, so yeah, my organization, nah, non-existent. <laughs> I am pretty chaotic in that, yeah, I just go to Steam, which we know does not fully represent all of the games that I play. Like, same with both of you. Like, the MMOs that you play are not being tracked on Steam. That's a lot of your playtime for, like, mm-hmm. like all three of us at points. Um, but I just go to Steam and I sort by either hours played total when I'm looking for, like, us doing group discussions and me wanting to bring up games that I have strong feelings about. So I just jog my memory on everything that I have the most hours played in, or I go for, yeah, Molly, the um, like either when it was added or most recently played or something like that, because this is the time of year when all of us are starting to think about this. The end of the year is coming. We're about to be having discussions about game of the year and like other smaller awards. And we're going to have to look back through like, what did I actually play this year? And Mm -hmm. Fraser has a good like way of organizing that now. And I, as we're starting to think about these conversations, I was like, oh yeah, just like looking through my Steam library is not cutting it. So I did actually put together a spreadsheet yesterday, not even because we were having this conversation. This, I, I was not out of guilt. It was just like fully needed utility of, I've declared myself like the cozy games person this year that's just become my thing all of us on the team sort of have like subgenres, micro genres things that we like sort of softly specialize in or like our favorites and i've decided that's my thing cozy games are not like a genre that's a mood they're very hard to keep track of which ones <laughs> have i vibe. played yeah so i had to make a whole list and so the purpose of my list is keeping track of like ones that came out this year 
whether I like own the full version, have played a demo, whether or not I would recommend it. So I can start thinking about like my plans for the end of the year. And that's like when I went to go look for other examples, Fraser, of people doing this, I saw it hadn't even occurred to me yet until I did this, that there were different goals associated with the spreadsheets. Like I saw one person saying they just want to clear their backlog. So it's all the backlog games. And if they finish a game, it's off the spreadsheet. It's done. It's gone. Um, because that's the whole purpose. And yours is more of a like organizing your library in such a way that you feel like compelled to play the things that are in it more. Is that is that like the mood? Is that the vibe? Yeah. Like I, actually when I if initially years before I actually made one thought about a spreadsheet, it was a backlog thing. Mm-hmm. Um you know, just on Steam, I have like 2,000 games or something like that. Yeah. Um, and you sort of accumulate them in this job. You know, you get a lot of like codes and stuff like that, and you just never play them. Uh, and there's just so many. And things that I really wanted to play, or I'd put in like 20 minutes or an hour and enjoyed it, but had to move on to something else. Um, so I've got a huge backlog. So there was still part of that um, when I actually did make the spreadsheet. But yeah, it was more motivating myself to just finish games. Um, but there's like a double edged sword there because I started feeling a little bit like I needed to finish games and I mm. needed to like make more effort even when I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. yeah. Like just checking the box and it was actually like really burning me out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, like I always said, when I got this, started doing the spreadsheet, this was not, this was meant to be fun. It did. I didn't want it to feel like work or that I had to power through any games. Um, so this year I have played, I think almost as f- like, or finished almost as few games as I did in like 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, I have spent way more time playing live service games, mm-hmm. games that yeah. for me cozy, not necessarily yeah. <laughs> cozy games, but have that sort of cozy feel. Mm-hmm. Um, like I play a lot of Guild Wars 2, a yeah. lot of Guild Wars 2. Um, and also just a lot of games that I love, you don't finish. Um, like nowhere in my spreadsheet will you see Crusader Kings 3. Um, right, yeah. But I've played so much of that. Um, so I've more kind of, like I still use the spreadsheet. I still like it, but I'm feeling like I'm less um, sort of beholden to it now than I was in previous years. Um, where sometimes I would be like, I'm not sure about this game, but I see on how long to beat it's only three hours long so i'll just knock that out in an Mm -hmm. afternoon and then that's on the list i haven't been doing that this year and i feel a lot less stressed that's good yeah that's good that's an improvement it's finding the balance right between like organizing something that you're wanting to actively participate in but you maybe like struggle which is kind of how i feel about games a lot of the times i struggle to get my brain to like actually sit down and focus on this thing that I really want to do and I just don't seem to have the mental capacity for. It's like it's finding a way to help that without turning it into like a chore, right? Like it can already not to not to like sound like I'm complaining. It can already be kind of difficult sometimes to like enjoy games as a hobby when you're in this job because you're always thinking about like how can I say cool things about this game, like to tell other people about it or, you know, just, just stuff like that. And I think it can already kind of feel like a chore sometimes and I don't want to make it an even bigger chore. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the balance that I would worry with when it comes to like a, like a spreadsheet, like what, what things are specifically on your spreadsheet? phrases? Yeah. Tell us the grognardy category details. Like, yeah. Like what are the categories? Yeah, it's really basic because I, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm not that kind of neurotic. Um, But uh, so it's just based by month and then it's just a list of the games color coded and their platform. That's it. Nothing more complicated. I don't put like how long it took me to beat them or or anything like that. I don't track genres um, because I just know looking at them what the genre is and I don't really care that much how many rpgs i played or how many strategy games um so really i wanted to keep it as neat as possible and not get too into the spreadsheet aspect um and as a benefit that means i don't spend too much time working on a spreadsheet instead of playing the games on the spreadsheet (laughs) exactly exactly like you know the only time that's acceptable is like eve online or something (laughs) you know where like spreadsheets are the game uh yeah i didn't want it to be boring or feel like a chore 
So I've just kept it pretty simple. And I mean, I, I really like looking at it and seeing that I do mostly just finish games that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, there are very few reds and yellows. And even uh, like, I think a lot of the reds are things I reviewed and just had to finish. <laughs> yeah. Um, and or, or things that like, even though I really didn't like it, I was quite interested. Um, like in, I think it was maybe 2020 when I, I did Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's pretty shit. Uh, I, I, I th- yeah, I, I think the pacing is garbage. Um, yeah. I just, I didn't like a lot of the, like, I didn't like how it stayed too similar, but also I didn't like any of the things that changed either. It was just not, it was not for me. I'm an old man. I just want to play Final Fantasy VII with pretty graphics, maybe, uh, mm-hmm. and not like segmented into what, it's going to be three games in the end, yeah. right? Yeah. Fuck it's that bullshit. Um, so I, I, I made that red, but I still glad that i actually saw it through to the end um and i probably will play the next one as well um so even the reds are usually like there's something there and it doesn't feel like i've wasted my time playing these games uh Mm -hmm. like it still feels like time well spent uh but yeah mostly green and that makes me feel very happy every time i look at it i'm like excellent i'm sort of sticking to my you know the games that i actually like rather than wasting my time with the games that are shite yeah yeah Molly, you're the one who told me that how long to beat the website. Um, Fraser, you mentioned it, and that's what reminded me. Like, you can import your Steam library uh, yeah. to, like, check different things. Have you ever done that before, either of you? I've no, I haven't. I, I check it on, a, like, a case-by-case basis. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a handy tool. Mm-hmm. Molly, yeah, have you ever imported your library? I think I did. I think I did, because that's how I found out that Euro Truck Simulator 2 <laughs> is, like, one of the longest games to complete, like, on my on my Steam library. I think that's how I how I discovered that, was by importing all of my games in. Yeah. But, um, no, I, I, I think how long to beat is, is a good tool as well in kind of determining what games you, uh, you pick and pluck from. Mm-hmm. as well right i think maybe using the two in tandem like alongside a spreadsheet i don't know do you use like steam collections or anything like that fraser like do you organize yeah. your steam library like i do sort of yeah compatible with your spreadsheet or is it just like a different organization method yeah it's different it's not connected to the spreadsheet um it's more just because i have so many games and sometimes i'm like i'm in the mood for a specific vibe because I'm not really just breaking them down by genre, I'm breaking them down by like vibe as well. So I've got ones that are just like weird games. If I want something surreal and strange, so I've got like Hypnospace Outlaw and stuff like that in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've got ones that are like all about just being being the boss, management <laughs> games basically, but I don't call them management games, that would be boring. Boss um, games. Yeah, boss <laughs> games. Uh, <laughs> And I, I, you know, I find that really helpful because I do get in moods for like vibes and genres and things like that. Um, and like, you know, like Lauren, you were saying with cozy games, that's not really a genre. There's such a broad kind of like amount of cozy games, but you can make it a collection still and just put all of the cozy games that you've got in your library there. Um, so it is a really handy organizational tool, especially when you have a library as large as ours. Yeah. That's something I used to do. Like it was a few years back. I did separate my steam library into the randomest collections. I won't say that it was like good thought put into it. Now that you say that I should be marking like, yeah, the cozy games, the things that have these like non-standard genres that I might want to like keep track of in a certain way. I'm just really bad at when something goes into my steam library. Like we all know sometimes we get copies for games it's for work or, it, you know, and it goes into your library and you don't immediately in that moment decide to like categorize it that goes into like uncategorized. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I don't go through and like clean up my room and categorize things. Um, That's something I should do, but my steam categories are messy. I have like, um, I have like a bunch of RPGs tagged. I'm looking at it now because I know my categories are very silly. Like I had played versus unplayed. That's not kept up to date anymore. (laughs) <laughs> I have like everything that's an RPG. I have things separated by whether I consider them like AAA games or indie games, which as we know is like mostly useless. I have all of the Star Wars games cordoned off in one space because I redeemed a giant pack of 14 Star Wars games at one point. Uh, 
look, I don't know. And then my favorites is just like chock full of exactly what you would expect it to be. And then I have a bunch of uncategorized games that I've not touched. So yeah, I tried to categorize in Steam at one point and I think it is pretty useful, but I just, I didn't keep up with it. Whoops. The maintenance, right? I think that's another thing that stops me from kind of trying to organize how I play games is is the constant maintenance. But I do really want to do collections. Like when, um you know, we we saw a, a Reddit thread and it was about the different ways that people sort of tackle their backlog and organize their games. And I never thought to use Steam categories to mm-hmm. do that. So maybe like, like a, I really want to play these games category, like, and I kind of want to play these games category, and then like a finished game, because I feel like that would be like a nice way for me to organize it, right? Because I do like Hi-Fi Rush, uh, Bomb Rush, Cyberpunk. Uh, I really want to play those two games. Those are games that I've just not touched from this year. Uh, Neon White was a game that I never finished when that came out, and I really want to finish that game as well. There's just so many games that like I keep looking at them. I'm going to play that. <laughs> and then I just immediately forget to play them. So I think if I categorized it, like, you know, high priority, medium priority, I think Steam collections are really good for just being able to, like, see everything. Because I don't want to play all the Resident Evils that I got in a Humble Bundle 10 years ago. No offense to Capcom and to the Resident Evil series, but I don't really want to play... It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So if I could just kind of put those into a category that I never have to look at like the games I don't <laughs> the care about back top of the shelf don't make me I mean, look you can at even my hide shame. games on steam like you can just like keep them out of your library so they're hidden forever <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Really? so you never have to see them oh. I have done that with new world <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe I should do that too <laughs> Phrase and notoriously reviewed New World. Um, that would be one of the reds on your spreadsheet of things that you finished, probably uh, against you. Yeah, <laughs> three hundred hours or something. I didn't have any of this gray before I reviewed that game. <laughs> I looked so young and happy. Wait, is that um, literally true, though? No. That game, I was going <laughs> to say, please don't tell me. I know it's not the literal cause, but if they're correlated, that will still make me sad. No, I went. I started going gray because I'm getting old. Unfortunately. <laughs> Just age, oh. not New World. I cannot blame Amazon. Um, but the problem with Steam collections is that's just one platform, and we have all yes. these different ones. Yes, and like Epic has just really fucked everything up because <laughs> we have so many games on on the Epic Game Store now, and just no way to organize them because that is the worst platform. Like amazing games that I've got on that platform, but using it is a nightmare. It is slow unresponsive it has no real there's no there are filters but that's it um it's like really unhelpful um and so like i'm off often just searching for game like some games i actually have don't even show up on my library under the recent purchases um the newest oh, ones yeah. don't always show up they're missing and i can, i have to search for them so manually you just have to search, it, yeah yeah just like i have to type in the name uh but like if i'm not specifically looking for it i'm not going to see it um yeah so it's useless to me so i've like missed a lot of games on that that i would love to play if i just knew that they were there and had remembered mm-hmm. uh and game pass and ea app oh. and oh gosh like, yeah ubisoft Ooh. connect it's just too many <laughs> but there are ways to sort of sidestep that issue um god galaxy for instance i was about to ask if either of you'd ever used that so have you yeah. reported stuff and linked different accounts yeah, so I used to use it as my main platform okay. because I integrated all of my accounts and you can make, you can customize it loads. The issue is that you constantly have to keep reapplying and reintegrating things. Oh, um, right. So a while back, all of my Epic stuff stopped being integrated uh, and it wouldn't come back. Like I couldn't get it to work again. And I've had issues with Steam as well. And that is the problem with a third party tool is that like they don't always play nicely with your other libraries. Yeah. Um there is another one uh play something, I can't remember the name. I used that for a little while and its integrations were better, like I wasn't losing things, but it was uglier. Um and it was <laughs> like so much uglier and it was missing certain tracking things that I was using too. Um so I I just don't think there's a perfect solution yet. 
but I think we are moving in the right direction of just having these third party like integration tools uh, mm -hmm. to yeah. make our lives so much less stressful. And it's it's so harrowing having all of these games and all life of these stories. <laughs> oh, life is so challenging. <laughs> okay, as much as I want to demean this problem that we're having, like it, like so many other people are doing the same thing or like organizing their games by spreadsheets because we are not the only ones, of course, that end up with like giant backlogs. Like we have it because of work, but you contribute to a like a big charity bundle. Those have become really popular in the last couple of years. Suddenly you have 200 games that you don't know anything about. Um, this mm -hmm. this happens to like everybody else too, honestly, or, or like, I think I own Dragon Age Origins on three storefronts and I won't say I did that out of ignorance. I probably did it on purpose, which was a stupid thing to do. But I'm like, I know I own it on Steam and on Origin. I might own it on GOG or something as well. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I have that on multiple storefronts, though, which is so silly. Um, and I think other people run into that as well quite often. I have uh, Dragon's Dogma four times. <laughs> oh, my, oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't buy it for like so I I I bought it on PlayStation initially. Mm -hmm. Um then it came out on PC. Um so I got that. Then it came out on Switch. So I got that. And then I on like um it went up on like PS Plus or something like you can play it on PS. So I got it like so then it's in my library again or something like that. <laughs> I cuz I had it on the original like PS3 version or something. Um and so, I, but I love that game, but I have, and I've only finished it once though. <laughs> you didn't finish on I, every, every place you own it? I, I should, I should try to do that. I, I mean, I am working through the, the Switch version at the moment, actually. Like oh, yeah? I, I had a little rest for it, came back and I'm loving it. But now Dragon's Dogma 2 is coming. Uh, and I'm like, do I really want to play the old one? Or do I not just want to maybe play some other games that I haven't finished already and then go back to, you know, know, but I've. Yeah, look, like I, the thing is, I've got a character that I really love in the Switch <laughs> version. I made a little drow dark elf guy, and I made his yeah. pawn like a giant orc guy. So it's almost like I'm on a little D and D adventure in Dragon's Dogma. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is why this year I have not completed too many games <laughs> as I keep going back and doing it all over again. Yeah, you did say that the spreadsheet had given you some some strife this year, just mm -hmm. having it there was like actively reminding you that you <laughs> yeah that you like hadn't finished some some games it's you know you can you can live with with that shame your your spreadsheet though is it like you do it year by year right is it like is there like a big master spreadsheet and then it's categorized by year or is it just one big yeah so year? it's yeah so i have different sheets for every year so at the end of the year, I just, I close out that sheet and then put in brackets how many games I completed so I can always see right there without even having to go into the sheet and then That's move really on to the cool. next one. Um, but what is funny is you can see, like, I started off really bad in 2019 before I'd actually been doing the sheet. And then 2020 comes along and it's like, fuck it, a, a game a week, basically. <laughs> um, and then it's like slightly less the next year, slightly less the next year. Until you get to this year where it's like none, basically. Yeah. I think I've got, because I haven't actually marked down exactly what I've finished this year because it's uh, it's not finished. And that's that's when I put the grand total. But looking at it, there are just entire months where I don't finish anything. Uh, but I've been achieving lots in Guild Wars. That's, <laughs> so that's important. And that's, you know, that's I, the most important thing. I got a sky scale in like two weeks by not yeah, sleeping. Did. <laughs> my, my greatest achievement of the year uh I, getting a bloody dragon would you call it that would you call it your greatest achievement yeah. sleep, sleep deprivation <laughs> i haven't done much else with the year so yeah definitely my greatest achievement of 2023 maybe not of my life uh mm. but certainly this year i'm very proud of it yeah just intense <laughs> sleep deprivation um i saw a really like an a really interesting other reddit thread as well about spreadsheet organization where this person had made a spreadsheet where they would like input some values so like it was like you know the game uh the average like like the how long to beat time how interested they were in playing it and then the spreadsheet would calculate 
like a priority list and it would like say which games they should play first based on like the values that they gave to me that's a little far like to me that that's that's like going into the realms of playing did game. evan make this list? i was about to say <laughs> do not say this in the presence of evan our u.s editor-in-chief evan would be all about that shit he loves <laughs> values and algorithms and stuff like that he'd go he mad does. for it and he loves he loves waitings. He does. He, Evan does love numbers. I don't know. For me, for me, I feel like that's that's a little. I respect the person who did this very very. I much. don't. They sound like they're a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do I not want to meet that, that person. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wouldn't want to. I don't want to meet them. I I do feel like that. That is when it becomes kind of a chore, right? When you're needing a spreadsheet to tell you which games you should play first i guess for some people it would be really helpful but Mm -hmm. i don't think that's something that i would i would do i think i'd be like you fraser i think if i was to do a spreadsheet i would keep it quite simple i would just have you know the name where i have it because like you said like everything's so fragmented sometimes across launches i forget that i own certain games that i want to play and i'm like oh yeah that's on epic which is a thing that i don't really open that often because it's very slow and very annoying or like oh yeah this is on game pass which again i don't open very often because it's very slow and very annoying so (laughs) it's nice to have just a like a centralized place to see all that i think i would keep it simple yeah Molly, if you made a spreadsheet, what would your goal be? Like Fraser's is to keep track of like stuff that he's actually played and whether he's finished it. Like that's the goal. If you were keeping track of things in a spreadsheet, would it be like the backlog shame sheet? Would it be like, here's what I finished this year? Like what, what would you actually want to get out of it if you were like tracking it that way? I think I just want it as like a focus tool, right? I I would want it to, as a way for me to, focus remember that i have these games that i want to play that exist because that's the thing right it, it's it's like a focus thing for me i get time blindness so bad as well so i'll i'll be like oh i'm gonna boot this game up and then i'll sit there in like a menu and then all of a sudden it's been an hour and a half like i'll pause it to do something and it's been an hour and a half and i'm just on like reddit or something i've just got in distracted. another window I'm in another window. The game has been abandoned on my other monitor, right? And I think, I think if I had like a spreadsheet, it would, it would allow a greater degree of focus because I'd be like, okay, this game is like on a fancy dancy Google sheet. It's not that fancy, but (laughs) I don't know. It's it's cells, values that they're fancy to me. I feel like just having that list would give me a little more structure in how I in how I play games which I think is something that I do need I can't be loosey-goosey with my game playing anymore because I just end up not playing anything I just play like the same gacha over and over (laughs) again because it has dailies and they take like 20 minutes to complete or I play like nothing I'll just sit there and I'll like watch YouTube or something so yeah structure structure is what I would what I would want it for a hundred percent because that is that is the thing that I'm in the most need of is a little a little bit of structure and a reminder of what I actually do own yeah. what about you Laura what would, what would your purpose you said your purpose was like like remembering how yeah. you feel about games so the list that I've put together right now is just things that have come out this year that like I want to make sure I'm aware of in some capacity, like, because they're like this cozy game genre that's hard to like otherwise aggregate. And so, yeah, it's keeping track of like things that I know have come out, things that I've actually played and like whether or not I would recommend them if I've played them. So just like to organize my thoughts in that way. But the thing is, um, I actually do have a spreadsheet for a different category of media that I started after I first found out like a like year ago or whenever that Fraser, you had this spreadsheet and like, I was like, oh, that's extra at the time. And then unfortunately I am the serial killer spreadsheet person. Um, <laughs> it, it turns out neither of you have been subjected to the spreadsheets I produce for work uh, to keep track of certain things. You don't, you don't have to be aware of them, but there's a lot of tick boxes and drop downs involved so that I can sort things in certain ways. Um, 
And so I keep a spreadsheet of manga, actually, uh, oh. things that I like either. And it's like a uh, like full suite, like things I like am interested in, whether or not I own them, whether or not I've read them, what the genre is, what my notes are. There's a star rating in there that's done with a little drop down box. Um, it's and like it's all filterable. So it turns out like I I am the super spreadsheet nerd. Um, wow, you could work with someone for years and not know they're a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Why does this sound kind of good to me after I just denounced the last guy? <laughs> it, um, I, I'm pulling this up now on my other monitor because it has like a lot. Oh, no, that's not the right one. Um, where is it? Uh, she just has too many spreadsheets. That's yeah. somebody else's spreadsheet <laughs> that I use as a reference for books. Oh no. Uh, um, a reference spreadsheet. That's when you know you're in too deep. Okay, so I I guess I started this topic pretending like I was some normal person and I was like, let's bring Fraser on and make fun of him. And it turns out <laughs> I'm the freak. I do I, I mean you've made me feel a lot more normal. So oh, that's good. Thank I'm, you, Lauren. I'm so sorry, and you're welcome. Um I'm still trying to find here it is. Here is my spreadsheet. But yeah, it has like a name, a link to like the my anime list page uh, like whether or not i've read it whether or not i've owned it how many volumes there are whether or not there is an anime Ooh. adaptation uh when it started my rating yeah and i can the a lot <laughs> how do you have even time to read any manga when you're making this list <laughs> <laughs> you speed okay. reading <clears throat> You wouldn't believe how like little maintenance it actually takes. And I I was just saying this with you, Molly, like when it turns to my Steam library, I'm incapable of putting the toys away where they belong when I bring them home into the house, you know, yeah. like, and, and that is also the way it is with my physical things. Like I will come home from shopping and the shopping bag goes on the bed. And then like four hours later, I'm like, you should put that stuff away that you got. Um, and it's the yeah. same with my Steam library of like, I redeem the thing or I buy it and then I do not categorize it in the way that Fraser has explained. There are categorization tools. Um, but for some reason, the spreadsheets, I find it really easy to go in and just like beep, beep, boop, 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 and like do all the categorization done. for the thing. And it's like done, it's put away. Um, why do I do that? I don't know. Yeah, because what what do they say? They say, they say, put it away, don't put it down. That's what they say. <laughs> so with Steam games, you put it down and with spreadsheets, you put it away. I guess so. <laughs> I didn't know that was a saying. That's a saying I need in the rest of my life, actually, in my whole life. I have to tell myself it constantly, like like a like just we'll talk clothes. Like a like a t-shirt goes on top of my chair, and then the little voice in my brain goes, put it away, don't put it down. And I'm like, okay. Maybe I need to start applying that to categorizing all of my games mm -hmm. and just being able to see because I when when things are organized. It's so beautiful to look at, right? Like there's there's a quiet beauty in like a meticulously organized list of games. And I just don't have that. Like you look at my Discord servers, I have like 150 Discord servers that are just in Gross. a line. There are no folders. No I'm folders. I'm sorry, Lauren. Yeah, I'm sorry, really? Lauren. I know <laughs> you're an avid hater of too many Discords. <laughs> It's because Discord I'm in too many. Discord has folders? Yes, there are folders, yeah. Fraser. For people... I don't, because I don't have enough Discord servers to necessitate a folder. You're not because in the official... I'm 38. Why would I be in that many Discord servers? Okay, you're not in the official Discord <laughs> server for like 20 different things you're following for work? No, I'm not like... I j so I will sometimes join a Discord server for like if I'm... Because I don't write much news anymore. But like when okay. I'm writing a bit of news and wanting to research a story... I'll go into a Discord server for that game and then leave that Discord server. <laughs> I don't want to stay there. And no. yeah, I, I've got maybe like 10 that I've got that I've, I use properly. Um, I just, you have to understand, I dislike people a lot. <laughs> like yeah, I don't want to communicate with other humans if I can avoid it. Um, I feel that. I could just see Lauren counting how many she's got there. <laughs> I, uh, I I do have a folder on Discord, yes, for the servers that I've joined for work purposes to like follow a game. And unfortunately, I can't always just join and then leave again and get what I want. Sometimes you have to stay there because that's where they're posting their their patch notes first. So they're posting updates about like 
dark and darker. If you want information about what's happening with that game right now, you have to be in the Discord server, which that's a whole other conversation, Molly. You know, I have opinions about this. Anyway, the answer is 35 <laughs> that I am currently in. 35 that's, servers. That's not, that's that's not, not too bad. bad. Yeah. I, yeah, the number is not triple digits. And I think I have friends that do have triple digit numbers of Discord servers. And I just am like, that's just sick. That's not your job. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> It's, but, it's, uh, it's it's funny, isn't it? I have a friend who's in more Discord servers than I am. And he is... How many are you in, Molly? Come on. I'm, probably, I'm in about 100, 130 to 150. I did count <laughs> recently, but it's around that many. It's like definitely not more than 150, but it's definitely not less than 120, I'll say. Molly, it's put like... them away. Stop putting them down. <laughs> put them away. You're making me look, nervous. Ad- admit it now. These Most of these are not just because of work, right? Most of these are just because you want to be in them. Ten of I'd them are like... Final Fantasy XIV community servers. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, yeah, like Final Fantasy XIV specific ones. There's like Tekken servers for like each individual character that oh, all wow, have yes. their own what? like information. So I'm in like a couple of those. I'm in some servers just because I like the emojis. So sometimes I'll join a server and I'll be like, oh, those emojis are cool. And I will never engage with the server. I'll just use the emojis that they have. Um, and then I'm like, I actively participate in like three servers. And that's it. <laughs> Out yeah. of all the ones. Yeah. yeah same. That, that's, that's another part of, that's just another piece of the puzzle right now. We've got game organization. We've got Discord server organization. Yeah, yeah put the Discord away because I could keep talking about it. I have so <laughs> many feelings about the Actually, Maybe I need a spreadsheet Discord. for Discord servers as well. Maybe just... you do, Molly. Make a spreadsheet for your Discord server. <laughs> like why I'm in them. How important are they? Like, do they have how many cool emojis? Friends, how many mutuals do you have in this server? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do I like the whole like put it you know like don't put it down put it away though like because I need to add that to my apply that to my own life because I am a notorious put down guy um like in my bedroom right now just I, I was just looking um on the I've not even put it on a chair on the floor you have a coat some trousers a bag of Haribo and a bottle of vodka just in one <laughs> little pile do you know what? I did say in a chair, but I did also mean on the floor. I didn't want to be a, I didn't want to seem too, too gross. But yeah, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm also a put on the floor person. Harry Bo, Harry Bo clothes and alcohol sounds like the perfect. I mean, it sums me up. I like clothes. I like alcohol and I like sweeties. So, <laughs> here we go. The incriminating but from, in most of my flat, my... I have to keep things a bit tidier because I do have a little pooch who likes to destroy things. Uh, stuff, speaking yeah. of which, he is actually trying to pull my sock off right now oh, he's very cute cosmo little, little what are you doing baby what are you doing hello i love how this was a conversation about spreadsheets we and we have derailed it so thoroughly Already. discord and dogs <laughs> discord dogs uh hello. adhd tips <laughs> that really is what that is put it away don't put it down yes <laughs> oh i'm gonna start cosmo, my that to myself away. Yeah, I do all the, the time. Ever, <laughs> ever since I put heard that away, phrase, put him down. it does not leave my brain. Yeah, put put Cosmo away. Don't put him down. <laughs> don't put him you, don't, down. you don't have okay. to put him away. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his little yeah. Halloween scarf on as well. He's oh, so he's, he's so cute. Adorable. I'm sorry if you're listening to this and not watching uh, a, right a now. There's a dog on screen, a curly Yeah, we, we, have, we have a dog guest. So wait, so Lauren, are you... Do you want to be a little more organized? Are you going to like take that step to you? You've already made a spreadsheet, but are you going to like maybe try to go back to your Steam collections? Like, is that going to be a goal for like now or maybe 2024? Because 2024 is going to be a pretty big year for games as well. I feel like the is latter it? half of oh, 2023 no. has been really big for games. Yeah. And I feel like that's continuing into early 2024 i think there is like a week like the end of january to the beginning of february where so many big games are coming out and i feel like if i don't get everything under control before the new year i think it's just gonna spiral so i think i'm gonna make an effort to start organizing all of my gaming stuff are you gonna make an effort lauren 
Um, I think the ship has sailed on the Steam library. I don't think I'm ever going to get that, like, use the categorization and that in a way that's, like, effective for me. Mm -hmm. I think um, I probably will put some more thought into the spreadsheet of cozy games for next year. Like, I don't don't think I'm going to wind up categorizing, like, all of my gameplay time. I think I won't keep on top of that, and it just, like, won't... um, compel me to be better in any way like in my personal life and like personal game habits because I like Fraser I play a lot of games that don't end and I mean Molly I think it's the same for you too it's like I wind up playing um a crafting survival game for a week with like my like core four friends and then that game never gets checked off we just at some point kind of put it away like I'm gonna pick up phasmophobia again like that game's never done I but I think like for work and personal purposes, I think keeping better track of the cozy games in a spreadsheet might be something I do like, like get on from the start next year to actually keep track of. Cause at that point it'll be things upcoming that I don't want to forget about, which is another very important part of our job is like the amount of games that we are told about eight months before they launch. And then if it's not big enough, generally in the general space it totally falls off your radar even if you personally were like this is neat I would like to Mm -hmm. tell people about this when it comes out and oh my gosh our inboxes our spreadsheets our steam libraries are a mess we do our best um so yeah I think in 2024 I want that to turn into like an upcoming and like things to watch spreadsheet so that I cannot forget about stuff as it's happening throughout the year because I have no other tool for tracking that there's no there's no way my inbox has proven an ineffective tool for keeping track of things that are about to happen. <laughs> My inbox is completely unusable. So there needs to be some other way. And I think maybe it'll be a spreadsheet. What about you, yeah. Fraser? What's your like next year's goal? You're feeling a little malaise with your spreadsheet. Are you going to change it? Or are you going to soldier on? Ne- never change. Never change. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to change or improve. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep track of that. I think even though this year I've not played that many games or like finished that many games, um, it's still a handy tool. I still like using it. Yeah. It's low maintenance. Um, it's nice to just look back on a year and sort of I see what games I was more into, um, what games I really enjoyed. Like it, it, it sort of reminds me about the year broadly as well. Uh, so it's like a little bit of nostalgia. And, you know, I'd love to one day show it to uh, someone else's grandkids, not mine. I'm, I don't want grandkids. Um, <laughs> but just find, a, I'll be 80 and just find a kid on the street and be like, hey, look at all these games I played 70 years ago. Look um, at this time capsule of games yeah. that came out in 2023. Yeah. And they'll, you know, they'll, I'll be living in the metaverse by then, I'm sure. You know, no of legs. Course. I'll be like, we once had legs. It was so weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I definitely want to keep track of things. And I think... Um, I often play like a lot of games and, and finish up a lot of games at the end of the year, um, mm-hmm. which is like ridiculous because it's the time when I have like less time to play, Yep, you know, with like the holidays are pretty busy, like work wise. And even when we have our, our break, it's like family and, and feasting mm-hmm. and presents. Like I don't have time, but I will take my Steam Deck with me to my folks, mm-hmm. uh, to their home. Uh, and I, the Steam Deck has really helped me clear things off the list because I can just play it in bed away from the distractions of my many monitors and Mm -hmm. my 10 discord channels Um, (laughs) all 10 of them uh, all 10 of them Uh, but that's also like a vice as well like I've been playing Skyrim again Um, I like what like just because it can play on the Steam Deck now Uh, so that I'm not gonna when I finish that I'm not gonna mark it off the list because I've already finished Skyrim Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's you know it doesn't even count Exactly. But I don't want to think about it that way. I just want to think about having fun with games. I don't have to complete them if I don't want to. And I don't have to just play new games. Uh, But it is nice to see it added to the list, especially when it's green. Molly, what about you? What's your goal for next year going to be? Are you going to be organized in a different way? or Are you just going to carry on? I'm I'm going to I'm going to finish more games next year. That is that is my goal is to get through the tutorials on games that I absolutely hate tutorials oh my i know they're necessary but oh my god i hate tutorials so much i hate learning learning sucks um (laughs) but i'm gonna try and get over that hurdle because i'm missing out on like finishing 
so many cool games because of it. So yeah, next year my goal is to just play more games, get through the tutorial, finish said games and have fun and just because I feel like sometimes it can be really easy to disconnect yourself from the hobby um especially if like you're just not in the mood and you're really tired or might be burnt out it's so hard to find a way to reconnect with that sometimes that's really that's going to be my my goal I think I used to find it a lot easier on console because I would track like platinums when I played a lot of PlayStation I would like use like platinums to kind of see how many games I'd played in a year and I don't really care about achievements as much on Steam that's a lie I do I do care I care about achievements on Steam but I don't really use them as like a tracking method I guess Mm -hmm. um so maybe I need to find maybe through spreadsheets or through categories a nicer way to feel motivated to get through these games and finish them so yeah Yeah. that's that's my goal just play more enjoy (laughs) nice well, thank you, Fraser, for coming on to get needled by me, but then accidentally you're the normal one, it turns out. <laughs> yeah, so I don't glad. feel any shame now. I mean, yeah. I never feel shame, but uh, yeah, like I, I don't feel like I'm the weirdo now. Thank nope. you very much. You're definitely not. Uh, and if either of you two want to expand your spreadsheet capabilities next year, do you want me to, me to tell you about uh, conditional formatting and drop downs? Oh, I and, love that. Uh, yeah, happy to, happy to provide. <laughs> Whoops. Um, <laughs> Cool. Well, yeah. Thank you guys for talking about game spreadsheets. Um, you can read more of all of our work over on PCGamer.com. Maybe not about game spreadsheets. Maybe somebody should write about this at some point. Maybe that's an admission for me at the end of this year. We'll see what happens. But thank you both for being here with me. Bye. Bye. That was fun. And I didn't puke yeah. up at all. Yay. Yeah.